Hi everyone, my name is Matt, and welcome to my channel. I'm working on a Kingdom of Bretonia army for Warhammer the Old World, and I painted some of the archers already, but I'm still undecided on exactly how I want to paint the rest of the army. I'm leaning towards giving most of my knights unique heraldry, and I figured why not paint up a single knight in red and black to match the box art. So grab your brushes, and let's paint. I kept the knight separate from the horse, and attached it to a cork with wire to make painting easier. Then I undercoated both pieces with my favorite priming method, beginning with a light gray primer all over, followed by a spray of white from the top and sides. I mixed equal parts wildwood and contrast medium for the first stage, and painted the horse and leather areas. When applying contrast paint, I like to work on one section at a time, and put down plenty of paint at first to make sure it gets into all the details. Then I'll wipe the brush on a paper towel and soak up any excess paint and then move on to the next section. Don't worry about being too messy with this stage. Any mistakes are okay, since we'll be using opaque paints for the other areas later. I want to add a little more interest to the horse, and Basiliconum Gray will work well for that. Contrast paint is really easy to blend. Just paint a small section at a time, rinse the brush, wipe it on a paper towel, and then use the clean brush to blend out the edge before the paint dries. I darkened the bottom of each leg, the nose, and the tail. Let's move on to the leather next. Right now it's looking too close to the horse color, so I'm going to darken it with a layer of black templar. Try to keep the layer thin and even, and avoid any pooling. The brown undercoat shows through a little bit, and makes a nice warm black tone. While I had the black templar on my palette, I also painted the horse's hooves and eyes. Next I painted some black on the inside of the robes. I think it's important to simplify the areas that are uninteresting, in regard to time as well as visual interest. The main focus will be on the heraldry, and by keeping the other areas more simple, it saves us time that we can spend on the more important details later. Simplified areas are also important to have because they allow the viewer's eye to easily pass over them and focus on the main center of interest. Next I base coated all the steel areas with iron hand steel. Don't worry if any gets on the fabric, we'll be using opaque paint for that anyway. Just be careful around the leather areas. After it dried I painted a second layer to ensure an even finish. Then I shaded the steel with Griff Charger Gray. I really like the blue-gray look to this paint, and it works really well over metals, too. After the shade dried, I used an old brush and lightly dry brushed the armor with iron hand steel. Yeah. 
I painted the sword handle and any other remaining metal details with Runelord brass. Then I shaded the brass with Dark Oath Flesh. This is a similar color to the Reichland Flesh Shade paint, but I prefer it because it's stronger and I only need one coat for the amount of depth I want. Next it's time to base coat all the fabric. And rather than use contrast paint, I'm going to use opaque colors. On large, flat surfaces like the horse's barding, contrast paints will be very uneven, and they'll require a lot of work to look decent. In this case, an opaque paint will look cleaner, and it will be much less time consuming. I'm going to give the horse and knight a quartered pattern with corn red and black. I'm avoiding the heraldry for now. I want to use a different shade of red, and I'll do that later. After the first layer was dry, I painted a second layer to ensure the finish was smooth and even. I mix my own 8-step grayscale from white and black, and I'll be using a few of these paints. No manufacturer makes true neutral grays, so I had to make them myself. I think color mixing is one of the most important things you can learn as a painter, and I'd really encourage you to try. I can make a video sometime about mixing your own grayscale if there's enough interest. If you'd like to see something like that, drop a comment below. Next I base coated all the other areas with a very dark gray, number one in my scale. I didn't measure anything when I mixed, so I can't give you an exact recipe, but it's maybe one part white to eight parts black. Keep in mind this recipe will change depending on what brand of paints you use. The exact shade doesn't matter too much, as long as it's almost black, but not quite all the way there. Those base coats are looking clean, so now it's time to shade them. I mixed a little black into the corn red, and painted this directly where I want to make the shadows. Think of the shapes like the cell shading in animation. It can have a hard edge if you want, or you can quickly rinse the brush and blend out the edge for a smoother look. After it dries, you can go back in with a glaze and smooth out the area some more. If you want a more in-depth guide for blending paint this way, check out my video about heavy metal techniques here. Next I shaded the dark gray area in the same manner using pure black. Think of the shapes that the shadows would make in the cloth, some rounded triangles or crescent type shapes. Leave the edges sharp if you like, or go back in with a clean brush and soften the edge. I also painted a narrow line of black all around the edges of the heraldry shield and the leather straps. While I had the black paint on my brush, I went over to the red side and added some shading around the straps and heraldry as well. We'll leave those areas for now and move on to base coating the heraldry. I want the heraldry to be a brighter red than the cloth, and Mephiston red should do the trick. I want to keep these areas especially smooth because I'll be applying a decal later, and the smoother the surface, the better the decal will adhere. Smooth base coats depend on thinning the paint slightly, but I think one thing is often overlooked and not talked about enough, and that's the amount of paint on the brush. There should be enough paint on the brush to make a smooth mark, but not so much paint that it flows off the brush and runs everywhere. The paint should stay exactly where you put it, and the layers should be thin enough that you can see it start to dry right away. After the first layer dries, repeat a few more times as necessary until you get a solid, bright surface. Even though I'm going to paint a quartered pattern with black next, 
I still find I get better results when painting the whole area first before adding the freehand. With the red looking nice and solid, I started off by dividing the shields in quarters with thinned black paint. Try to keep the line as narrow as possible here. The thicker the line, the more it will take away from the red sides and it will look uneven. Once the lines are drawn, fill in the opposite sections, then paint a second or third layer as needed for an even finish. There's one last base coat to lay down, and it's a couple small areas of white. White is one of those colors that a lot of painters struggle with, and one of my favorite strategies is to base coat with almost white, a very light gray. In this case, it's the final step before white in my gray scale, number 8, and you can see they're really close. This is something like 20 parts white to 1 part black. Just like with the dark gray earlier, I couldn't give you an actual recipe, since paint consistency varies so much. White is as bright as we can go, so we can only shade it. There's no way to highlight it. When I originally mixed up this gray, I wanted a shade that was nearly white and could function as a white for mixing purposes, but it was toned down just enough so I could always have the opportunity to highlight it with pure white on the edges. With the light gray base coat down, Thin some Fenrisian gray with a small amount of water and paint a few recess shades. Make sure to have very little paint on the brush. We're not doing a wash here. Rather than letting the paint flow and run everywhere, we're trying to put the paint exactly where we want it. I want to put down some soft, subtle shading here and there, and then some sharper line shadows in the crevices. With all the base coats and shades done, you could stop here and call the model finished, but we'll carry on and highlight it. First, let's knock out the white since it's such a small area. Thin down the white with a small amount of water and pick out all the edges. Make sure to use a good quality, bright white paint. There are a few different brands out there, and I'm sure we can get some helpful comments and suggestions down below for good white paint. Next I highlighted the edges of the leather straps with Steel Legion Drab. This may be a pretty big jump in value, depending on how dark your model got. If you want to paint a mid-tone highlight first, try mixing some Rhinox Hide with a Steel Legion. I picked out the edges of the red cloth with Mephiston Red. I added a few line highlights around the shield, too. Nothing too crazy, just a subtle accent. I want the red on the shields to be brighter, so I highlighted the edges of those areas with Wild Rider Red. I'm going to be applying a decal in the center of the shields, so I don't want the highlights to get too thick, otherwise they might make the surface uneven. This is also a great opportunity to touch up any crooked lines or uneven sections in the quartered pattern.
Next I highlighted all the black areas with a dark gray. In this case it's the second gray in my gray scale. But if you don't want to mix anything, Eschen gray is pretty close. The brass and steel could use an edge highlight, and Stormhost Silver will work great for both. I picked out the edges and corners with a fine brush. For the chainmail areas, I think a very light dry brush works fine. I also picked out the rivets on the straps and the horseshoes. I applied some decals to the heraldry with Microset Solution, and after the decals dried, I painted a thin layer of medium to seal them and to dull down the shine. I clipped the wire on the knight, drilled a hole in the saddle, and then attached the pieces together with super glue. I painted the grass tufts with Straken Green, and then shaded with Bealtan Green. After the shade dried, I used an old brush to apply a generous layer of wood glue. Then I sprinkled on coarse gravel and fine sand. After the glue dried, I painted the base with thinned Rhinox hide, followed by a dry brush of Mornfang brown and then Xandri dust. I painted the rocks with Dawnstone and shaded them with Agrax Earth Shade. I painted the edge of the base with black and then applied patches of static grass with super glue. I'm really enjoying my Bretonian army so far, and I can't wait to get started on the other nights. I think I'll make a few more videos since each night will be different. Do you have any heraldry ideas or want to request specific colors for a night? Drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Well that's it for now, I need to get back to building the rest of the nights. Thanks for watching, and until next time, happy painting.